special week where the three Abrahamic religions are all celebrating very important feasts. The Muslims celebrating Ramadan and I wish Ramadan Kareem to all my Muslim friends and viewers and to Jews who are celebrating uh, Passover, uh, Happy Pesach and may the year be full of blessings and goodness for you and peace and for the Christians who are celebrating Holy Week, uh, the most sacred days of the year, uh, where yesterday was Good Friday, the uh, remembrance of the crucifixion of Jesus. And unfortunately on that day, we had uh, severe violence that broke out um, at a mosque and we're going to be seeing reports about it and discussing it, but there were many things that have been happening uh, for the past uh, weeks that have escalated our conflict. Uh, good morning, uh, Sabal here, I mean Yusuf, um, that have um, escalated the conflict. And part of the problem which we've been discussing is that, um, uh, is that while, um, the Ukraine has been going on. Israel has taken the opportunity to um, destroy many houses in the West Bank. Uh, many people have been arrested, shot, killed, uh, much violence perpetrated, particularly by the settlers uh, against Palestinians. And they thought that nobody would pay much attention to them because of the Ukraine, what was going on in Ukraine, and they were right. Good morning, Ati Arshad. So we're starting out with a call for prayer because this is what was happening when this uh, horrific event took place uh, in uh, Palestine. And we're going to look at 
some different reports of, of the event and see how the uh, various news um, agencies covered it in, in different ways. Uh, and one of the problem is the uh, coverage of these events, the news. So we'll um, now close down our prayer. Good morning, Atif Arshad on Facebook. And we're going to look at our first video uh, reporting uh, this horrific event. And this is from um, uh, uh, reported uh, uh, by Reuters. So let's see how Reuters talked about this event. I'll put it on full screen and so you can all see it because it's really important to understand the nuances when people report these events. Uh, because this is what affects people's opinions. Soldiers are very frightening. So, uh, good morning, Sadan Khan. Uh, one of the issues uh, when we're looking at these news stories is um, the, there, are they, there are such things as facts, but when people talk about the facts, uh, there's different ways that they talk about them. So let's see what Reuters says. Reuters says, um, Hundreds of Palestinians are detained by the Israeli government. Israel is on alert after recent deadly Arab street attacks. Jerusalem clashes pose risk of relapse into wider conflict. Jordan condemns the police entry into Alaska mosque compound. So at least 152 Palestinians were injured in clashes with Israel riot police inside Jerusalem Alaska mosque compound on Friday. The latest outbreak in a recent upsurge of violence that's raised fears of a slide back to a wider conflict. So this is a, um, Reuters is um, uh, being a more, um, uh, trying to be more neutral and just saying that there's this conflict. It's not blaming the conflict on one side or the other. And it talks about that there has been a recent upsurge in violence, um, but it doesn't say just the uh, death of the Israelis or the Palestinians, it just talks about recent upsurge of violence. So Reuters, um, in their introduction here, they're uh, trying to be uh, pretty neutral. Let's see if they continue this neutrality. So most of the Palestinian injuries were incurred from rubber bullets, stun grenades, and beatings with police batons. Palestinian Red Crescent said at the most sensitive site in the generations old Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Then it talks about Israeli forces have been high alert after a series of deadly Arab street attacks throughout the country over the past two weeks. Confrontation. Now, what it doesn't say mention is that there would have been an escalation in settler violence uh, against Palestinians and also an escalation of demolishment of houses um, uh, that were going on, um, which uh, provoke the Palestinians uh, into this violence. So. Um, the, an escalation of arrests uh, connected with the, um, the demolitions. Uh, so uh, there has been an escalation of violence. The Israeli security forces are on high alert, but part of the problem that the Israelis were having is they couldn't control the settlers. So that's not talked about here. Um, confrontations, uh, uh, okay, so they're afraid it could, uh, last time they had something like this, last year we had the bombing of Gaza all over again. 
Now, the Alaska compound sits atop the old city plateau of East Jerusalem, which was captured by Israel in 1967. The Middle East War is known to Muslims as Al Haram al Sharif, or the Noble Sanctuary, and to Jews as the Temple Mount. Well, one of the interesting things, um, good morning, Saddam Khan, welcome. Um, one of the interesting things is, uh, I'm, a, as you may know, I'm an art historian. Um, and uh, one of the controversies about the Temple Mount is it was not the original temple. And this you can Google, you can see the research uh, that uh, the Western Wall, where the um, Jews go to pray, is um, actually um, some art historians and archaeologists say it was actually the wall of a Roman fortress. Uh, it was a Roman uh, fortress, not the uh, Jewish temple. And they said the Jewish temple was in a different section of Jerusalem. So uh, there's some controversy there um, that uh, makes this whole uh, ep episode uh, even more interesting that um, is that actually the site of the ancient temple? And a lot of archeologists say, no, it's not. Uh, but anyhow, most people think it is, so uh, um, they get crazy. Okay, tensions this year have been heightened in part by Ramadan, uh, consider co coinciding with the Jewish celebration of Passover. Now, let me say something. There is nothing inherently, inherent in Ramadan that would cause violence. Ramadan is a feast where people fast all day long. And believe you, uh, believe that fasting does not make people violent. Fasting makes people weak. It makes them tired. Most of when I lived in Jordan for many years, most of my Muslim friends slept all day. And what goes on at night is you eat. You have iftars, which you uh, have to visit your friends, your family. Uh, you invite poor people, um, you, uh, you give gifts uh, to the poor, you do good deeds. There is nothing in Ramadan that makes people violent. But the way they write it here, um, that uh, tensions in part because of Ramadan coinciding with Jewish celebration of Passover. Well, there's nothing in Passover that makes people violent. Um, that... Uh, the people in Passover, uh, as in Ramadan, is focused on food and eating. And that's what everybody looks forward to. In Ramadan, people can't wait for sunset so they can eat. And they're up all night eating and visiting with friends. Uh, and they have a big meal uh, before sunrise. And then they usually go to sleep all day. Passover is exhausting. We have two days. Uh, preparing uh, all of the complicated uh, things you need for the meal. You need a, a, a burnt bone, you need a burnt egg, you need bitter herbs, um, you need uh, all kinds of setup things to wash your hands with water. It's a very complicated setup and it takes several days uh, and people spend the whole week before Passover shopping. Uh, uh, getting everything ready, cleaning their house, uh, getting ready of all the shamats, which is anything that might have had yeast in it, uh, because they have to have no no yeast in their house. So the week before uh, Passover, everybody's busy cleaning, cooking, shopping, preparing. So none of these feasts, Ramadan or Passover, have anything inherently in them to make people violent. Nothing. And it really annoys me deeply, having lived with Muslims and Jews and Christians, to somehow have these wonderful religious ceremonies, religious holidays, blamed for the violence. Ramadan was not the reason for the violence. Passover is not the reason for the violence. The violence was the result of things that happened before the holidays, things that happened before the holidays. All right, let's keep reading. Um, in a statement, Israel police and hundreds of Palestinians hurled firecrackers and stones at the forces and toward the nearby Jewish prayer area of the Western Wall in the Old City after Ramadan morning prayer. Well, one of the reasons they 
that uh, this was going on is this, and this is not talked to you about here, that there were settlers, Jewish settlers outside the mosque and in this area uh, that they're talking about who were uh, demonstrating and uh, threatening to invade Alaska Mosque. And they had animals, sheep with them, goats with them, in order to do animal sacrifices, which was the way it was in the Bible in the old days, before the, the temple was destroyed. These settlers were, and I've seen them, mobs of them. I've been there. I usually travel to Jerusalem on a Friday. And many of the times that I went, there were riots because the settlers were coming in, uh, the ultra-Orthodox Jews um, who drive, you know, most of the Jews in Israel crazy, anyway, um, who were coming with carrying lambs and sheep, uh, and goats, to make human sacrifices on the mosque, and they made a riot. So they would often do this on a Friday, which was the holy the Sabbath for uh, the the. Uh, eve of the Sabbath for the Jews and the Holy Day for the Muslims, so it always caused a riot. So this is nothing new, nothing new. Uh, so yesterday morning, there were, as the Muslims were going in to pray for their morning prayer during Ramadan, there were mobs of Jewish settlers outside getting ready to invade with, um, uh, with uh, lambs, with sheep animals for animal sacrifice and doing prayers outside and uh, making a big scene. So the um, people inside the mosque were afraid of getting uh, invaded. So they were putting up uh, wooden barriers on, uh, to protect them from the invasion from the uh, nearby uh, Jewish prayer area um, where the uh, these uh, settlers, Orthodox settlers, ultra, I'll have to say ultra Orthodox. I know lots of lovely Orthodox people, but these ultra Orthodox settlers were gathering and they started throwing fireworks at them to keep them away from coming into the mosque. Now, this is not covered in this news report. And this again is pejorative towards the Palestinians. It makes that the Palestinians are just lunatics who went to prayer and then just decided to throw stones and firecrackers. Now it's a long, a long throw from Alaska Moss to the Western Wall. I don't know exactly how many feet it is, but um, nobody really was in danger from getting hit by anything uh, from the mosque because the distance between the mosque, those of you who've been to Jerusalem, you know, there's a big distance between the mosque, the inside of the Alaska Mosque and the Western Wall and the prayer area. It's a long throw. You have to have some kind of, you know, maybe be uh, have a slingshot like David did to get anything that far. They were basically throwing the things in that direction to protect them from the settlers. And I've been caught in some of these situations in Jerusalem, and it's not funny. The settlers were uh, violent and crazy, uh, pushing, shoving, threatening, uh, the Palestinians are pushing back. It's a mess. And so that's what was going on. There was no, um, no exterior violence, no aggressive violence from the mosque towards the, uh, towards the outside, uh, um, you know, towards the outside. They were just trying to protect the mosque from getting invaded by this group that was right outside. Okay. Not mentioned at all. Then it said, uh, it said police and then entered the Alaska Mosque to disperse and push back the crowd and enable the rest of the worshipers to leave the place safely. It means that they went in basically to clear it out. Uh, leave, leaving the place safely is a joke because they're armed. As you saw from the footage we just saw, they're armed, they're pushing, they're shoving, they're beating, they're shooting people with rubber bullets. There's nothing uh, nice about uh, the Israelis police. The IDF did not go in like gentlemen to help rescue the, the people inside the mosque, not at all. Uh, adding the three officers were injured in the clashes. So obviously there were clashes that were coming in uh, and the Palestinians were fighting back. Police detained hundreds of Palestinians, a spokesman for Israel, Bennett said. We are working to restore calm on the Temple Mount and across Israel. 
Alongside that, we are preparing for any scenario and the security forces are ready for any task. Well, that means they're just gonna continue to go on, terrorize Palestinians, um, arrest people, shoot them, and demolish houses. That's what's what's going on. Egypt, Qatar, and the US, United Nations stepped up their mediation between Palestinian factions led by the Islamist group Hamas, which runs Gaza and Israel in a bid to prevent further escalation of violence a Palestinian official told Reuters. Hamas demanded that Israel freeze nearly 500 people it had detained on Friday, stop provocative visits to al Aska Mosque by Jewish groups, and this is because this is what happened, and end military incursions into the West Bank. Um, the uh, Palestinian foreign ministry referring to the violence in the Holy Compound said it holds Israel fully and directly responsible for this crime and its consequences. So um, the international community should intervene immediately to stop Israeli aggression against al Aska Mosque and prevent things from going out of control. Uh, Jordan, whose Hashemite monarchy is a custodian of the Muslim and Christian sanctuaries in East Jerusalem, condemned the Israeli violence as a flagrant violation. Israel recognizes the Hashemite role as custodian, uh, maintains overall security, but ignores the uh, Hashemites uh, when uh, they decide to invade. Now, what does the US say? The US State Department, you know, Ned Price uh, said tensions would be eased. We call on all sides to exercise restraint, avoid provocative actions and rhetoric and preserve the historic status quo on the um, Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount. Um, for Wes, when Esland, the UN Special Envoy for the Middle East Peacemaking urged all sides to help calm down. So everybody's saying they're asking them to calm down. And they talked about last year where there were nightly clashes between Palestinians and Israeli police um, and uh, mm. the police raids on Alaska Mock uh, provoked the Israeli Gaza war that killed more than 250 Palestinians and 13 people in Israel. Now, OK, now here we have a little reference to what may be behind this. Since last month, Israeli forces have killed 29 Palestinians in the course of carrying out raids in the West Bank after Palestinian assailants killed 14 Israelis in a string of attacks in Israeli cities. So this is really what's behind what's going on. There's nothing violent in Ramadan or Passover. But these holidays are coming after months of escalation of violence against Palestinians, demolitions in, of homes in East, uh, Palestine, in East Jerusalem, the uh, provocative arrests and killings of many, many Palestinians, including children. A 14 year old was just killed the other day. Um, so this, um, these um, escalations of violence uh, provoke violence that provokes more violence. As Gandhi said, it's the chain of violence. Uh, one act of violence leads to another act of violence. Now, Israel claims all of Jerusalem as its eternal capital, while the Palestinians seek to make East Jerusalem, including its Muslim, Christian, and Jewish holy sites, the capital of a future state. And when, um, when Israel was founded uh, under the UN, it was, good morning, Janan Nassib. When Israel was founded, it was clearly stated, clearly stated by the UN and by British agreements previously that Jerusalem was to be an international city, that Jerusalem was to be uh, shared by Jews, Muslims, and Christians. That was the deal, that was the agreement from the very beginning because everybody acknowledged that Jerusalem has a history and its history belongs to Jews, Muslims, and Christians. And also many other religions who were in there. Uh, uh, if you read the history of Jerusalem, if you look on my YouTube channel, I have three um, videos I did on the history of, of Jerusalem. It's under Jacqueline Casal, Taylor Basker. Um, and my three histories of Jerusalem point out the enormous diversity that uh, Jerusalem had uh, in its thousands of years of history going back. I start in Neolithic 
times and I work all the way down to the current day in my films. Uh, welcome uh, Rashiv Parvaz on Facebook Live and Tanan Nasib, thank you. So we have about seven or eight people on Facebook Live now, I think, maybe more. But Jerusalem has always been diverse, multi-ethnic. You have people from all parts of the world living there, uh, people from Asia, uh, uh, people from all over Arabia. Um, you had Indians living there. You had many different religions in that city of Jerusalem. It's always been multi-ethnic and multi-religious. It was actually only the um, capital of Israel for about 200 years uh, under David. But uh, the rest of the time, uh, it was really um, a, uh, it was uh, under many, many different religions. So uh, we have to know our history. If we're gonna make conclusions about things, we have to know the true history. Um, now, uh, uh, all right, so that's uh, Reuters take. And what really gets me upset is um, this one. Um, this is CBS, okay? So uh, let's uh, look at CBS's analysis and, and compare that to Reuters. Uh, and then we're gonna do Al Jazeera after. So this is like so important. Um, because the media, um, even none of these are Fox News, okay? We're not, we're not going to go near Fox News because we know what that's going to be like. But even media that should be so-called liberal, democratic, um, not um, taking sides, forget it. It's, uh, it, it, it is... Uh, each one has their own. Tensions are high in the holy city of Jerusalem. More than 150 Palestinians were injured following clashes with Israeli police. Tonight, the United States is calling on all sides to exercise restraint. CBS's MTS Taya has the latest. At one of the holiest and hotly contested places of worship in the world, a bitter confrontation. After Israeli forces stormed the Al Aqsa Mosque, known as Temple Mount, to Jews and fired tear gas and rubber coated steel bullets shortly after morning prayers. Okay, so they're starting talking out with uh, starting the whole thing that Israeli forces invaded the mosque with tear gas and rubber bullets. So that's sort of you know, fair and accurate because that's what happened. Israeli police say they were targeting a group of masked men who had set off fireworks and were throwing Violence comes as tensions continue to soar. Um, why were these masked men, go on. Um, men throwing stones and fireworks? No reference to uh, what was going on outside the mosque that caused people to throw fireworks and stones. Uh, this is like at sunrise, okay? So who's go who, who would be in the streets at this hour? Nobody, everybody's still in bed, okay? Unless you're coming to the mosque. There's no reason for Jews or even tourists to be there because it's too early. You're not allowed in that early as a tourist into the area. So there's no explanation whatsoever that these people just went in and for some reason, just start throwing stones and fireworks. Hmm. Both Israel and in the Palestinian territories. For the past few weeks, 14 people have been killed following a series of attacks carried out by Palestinian assailants, while 25 Palestinians have have reportedly been killed following a wave of unrest and military operations by Israeli forces in the West Bank. Okay, we we know that there were many Israeli stabbed. Okay, what we're not talking about, what we're not hearing about, is what happened just before they got stabbed. The demolitions, the arrests, and the shootings of Palestinians. I'm not justifying violence, but uh, to be fair, uh, people don't become violent just for nothing. There's a reason. And unfortunately, um, the, uh, the Israeli, and the, again, it's the settlers who started a lot of this and provoked Palestinians. 
This weekend is expected to be particularly tense at religious sites in Jerusalem's old city, with the Islamic holy month of Ramadan overlapping with the Jewish Passover and Easter Sunday. NPS Live, CBS News, Monday. Again, somehow uh, what they to uh, create the most rugged Honda vehicles yet. It's that courage to challenge power. convention. Rise uh, to the Honda? challenge with the Honda. Yeah. Somehow, again, it's implied there's something inherent in Passover to make Jews violent. There's something inherent in Ramadan to make Muslims violent. There's something inherent in Easter and Holy Week to make uh, Christians violent. Um, and I think this is such a superficial way of uh, dealing with the news. Um, let's see what they say written um, um, here, here. It's basically the same narrative um that uh that we heard so um again um the uh cbs is ignoring what was going on outside the mosque with the settler groups absolutely no reference to it and again blaming somehow something in ramadan that makes palestinians go crazy and violent all right let's see what um what uh, Al Jazeera has to say about it. Um, so Al Jazeera has a very uh, interesting uh, different day. Here we go. The headlines are Israeli forces um, raid Alaska Mosque, over 115 Palestinians injured. Um, and okay, so let's see what their video is like, uh, which is, I believe, down here. Um, Let's see, I think I played it to look at. It. Yeah, okay, let's, uh, um, here we go. Israeli police have raided Alaska Mosque and other Israeli sites, firing tear gas and stun bullets. Video appears to show Israeli forces inside a prayer hall. Thousands of worshippers were gathered at the mosque for prayers. Israeli police say they moved in to break up crowds of protesters who had been throwing stones towards a Jewish holy site. Medics say more than 100 Palestinians were injured in the raid. Palestinian groups in mosque condemned the raids and said Israel bears responsibility for the consequences. Now, uh, what's interesting here is that uh, Al Jazeera acknowledges the um, invasion of the mosque and the uh, desecration of the mosque by the um, uh, by the soldiers but um, it just says they were throwing uh, um, uh, throwing stones towards the um, Jewish uh, sites um, so uh, they say that Israel had no interest in violence at the holy site but that the police were forced to confront violent elements who attack them with stones and metal bars. He said Israel is committed to freedom of worship for Jews and Muslims alike. The mosque was later reopened and 60,000 people went in. After prayer, thousands of Palestinians marched around the Esmanah chanting with our words, our soul, our, soul, our bloods, we sacrifice for you. Um, now, um, uh, reporting from Damascus Gate, uh, one of the Al Jazeera reporter said Israeli police stormed the mosque compound without pretext and assaulted worshipers near the Quibley prayer hall following the morning prayer. So she added here, and this is an important piece of the information that was not in the video. And I think, you know, Al Jazeera comes out of Qatar uh, and the, um, the, all the Gulf states are trying to uh, make nice with Israel. So they left this out of the video, but listen to this. Um, Simply seeing the Israeli police actually inside the Alaska mosque with men laying face down on the carpet 
Um, oh, wait a minute, no, she, she added that the es escalation came as far-right Jewish groups called for raids of the Alaska Mosque compound during the Jewish Passover holiday and the offering of animal sacrifices in its courtyards, which has not occurred since ancient times. So this is the only place that I've seen uh, that in the mainstream media, uh, and we're looking at Al Jazeera's mainstream media, um, that has mentioned this. And this is important. The people inside the mosque have groups outside the mosque calling for the invasion of the mosque. It's inevitable that they would um, do something to, to protect, to keep the invaders out of the mosque. Why didn't the IDF, why didn't they stop these Jewish groups who are not allowed to be doing this? They, they're, they're forbidden to do this and they usually get arrested. Well, maybe because they wanted an excuse to go in uh, and um, round up Palestinians and shoot up the mosque. They wanted to provoke Palestinians so they can have another war because Bennett is having problems in his government. He's losing support. So Bennett maybe needs another war. So he's provoking Palestinians by ignoring these Jewish groups uh, trying to invade the mosque. So um, she said uh, that Israel's ag actions inside the compound were a provocation. Wow, surprise, surprise. Israel provoking Palestinians, wow. Simply seeing Israeli police actually inside the Alaska mosque with men laying face down on the carpet, hearing the bang bang of stun grenades, seeing the cloud of tear gas, seeing distressed Palestinians being carried outside of the compound after being injured, deeply outraged and upset most Palestinians, she said, speaking from the out from outside the Damascus gate. Al Jazeera's senior political analyst, Marwan Bishada, blamed the Israeli occupation, the international community's indifference to Palestinian suffering amid the Ukraine crisis. <laughs> trying to call me um now uh where were we um so um that uh this provocation um is uh deliberate um the uh so uh there, there's a very this is a very good article and i um uh and Bennett uh, called the uh, people in the mosque as rioters, um, and ha Hamas called other Palestinians the West Bank and Israel to unite in support of Jerusalem and the Alaska Mosque. Um, so there were a lot of angry responses. Uh, here's the uh, Jewish groups calling for raids on Alaska Mosque uh, with the soldiers in front of them, but the soldiers aren't beating them up or anything uh, as they were the Palestinians are just standing there actually protecting them. Um, so uh, uh, this is um, the uh, hypocrisy of the um, authorities saying that uh, um, that the Palestinians uh, just randomly started throwing moss. Now here's a, a picture and um, you can see what I was talking about before the um, this space. Here's the uh, of the Dome of the Rock, okay? Um, and uh, the um, uh, Alaska Moss is next to it. And um, you've got the Western Wall here, okay? So that's quite a role for anybody uh, from the Alaska Moss. Now this whole thing is the Alaska Moss compound, okay? So uh, it's a big throw to the Western Wall, which is on the very outside of it. Uh, so I, uh, uh, I think that uh, we are looking at a government in Israel that is really interested in, um, in um, provoking Palestine in order to um, continue its uh, escalation 
against Palestinians. Now, the Christians, meanwhile, and this you don't see in the news anywhere, have also been in a big, having a big problem with Israel. And it's over the sale of a hotel with the, uh, with the uh, Orthodox Christians. So let's read what's going on with the Christians, because the Christians are also um, involved in this conflict. Now, here's from the Vatican News from a couple of days ago. Uh, the that Christian leaders in Jerusalem condemned the surge of violence in the Holy Land. The palace, the patriarchs, and the head of the churches of Jerusalem decry recent clashes between Israeli forces and Palestinians and the occupation of the Little Petra Hotel. The Little Petra Hotel. Big, big problem. Because this was a hotel owned by the Orthodox Christians, and it's been occupied by Jewish radicals, Hussein, um, uh, and uh, so what they're saying is that Christian Jews and Muslims in the Holy Land should show mutual respect. So what's, what's this business with the hotel? Okay. The patriarchs and heads of the churches of Jerusalem have strongly condemned the acts of indiscriminate violence, leading to violent clashes that have been occurring in various locations of the Holy Land over the past two weeks. Now, this is dated on, um, what's the date of this? Uh, this was dated, um, I don't see the date. I think it was April 5th or April 6th. So it was dated uh, last week before yesterday. Okay. Um, the latest incident, it happened on April 2nd. So, okay, so this is what this is. This was put up on April 2nd. When Israeli security forces killed three Islamic Jihad militants, during a raid in the West Bank. It came amid growing tensions ahead of the start of the Holy Muslim month of Ramadan that has seen a surge of violence, having over 12 people dead and many wounded. So Israel started this violence before Ramadan. In the same period last year, clashes between Israeli forces and Palestinians visiting Alaska Mosque in East Jerusalem led to 11 days of devastating conflict between Israel and the Gaza Strip's Islamist rulers, Hamas. In a statement released on April 2nd, the patriarchs and the head of the churches of Jerusalem expressed their condolence to the families of the victims, offering prayers and their closeness to them. They are concerned that tensions might continue to increase and a rare confluence of major religious festivals during the three Abrahamic faiths, Ramadan, Pesach, and the Holy Week Easter. They therefore called upon the faithful with each of these three traditions uh, to show forth mutual respect and care for one's neighbor that is central to the teachings of each of these religions. Um, so is a statement in these coming weeks um, they, that are sacred to our respective religious traditions. We encourage all people of good faith to walk in the pathway of peace that is so central to the symbolism of Jerusalem, the city of peace. Jerusalem, Salam, comes from peace, related to the Canaanite word for peace. Uh, in this way, we can be true witnesses to the world of the common vision of peace, Shalom, Salam, that is enshrined within the heart of our separate but intertwined religious beliefs. Uh, on the same day, uh, the head, now what's this? clash in the church over this hotel on the same day the heads of the christian the churches in jerusalem issued another statement condemning the recent forceful occupation of the little petra hotel by the jewish radical group atared koharim the ownership of this building located near the jaffa gate in jerusalem has been disputed in israeli courts after it was sold by the former greek orthodox patriarch Irenaeus the first in a controversial agreement signed in 2004. The heads of the church in Jerusalem have repeatedly warned against illegitimate actions of extremists carried out with intimidation and violence. In their statements, they said that by forcefully occupying the property of the Greek Orthodox Church, Atarek Kohanin activists committed a crime, a criminal trespass. and are beginning and are behaving as if they are above the law. 
remarking that the Little Petra Hotel is an important part of the Christian heritage of Jerusalem. The Christian leaders argue that the Judaization of Jerusalem will only lead to instability and tension. And they said acts of coercion and violence cannot lead to peace. So um, this has been a really horrible, horrible week in Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, we have um, uh, in the electronic intifada, um, a um, discussion of how Israel's terrorizing the Ramadan worships at the uh, and they uh, talk about the event. Uh, but there's other things that have been going on. Um, let's first cover about the West Bank violence. Um, um, and we see that Israel steps up the pace of West Bank killings. Um, here's a picture of the body of Shas Kamanji during his funeral in the West Bank city of Jerim, Janine on 14th of April. Um, human rights groups are calling for international action as Israel escalates its repression against Palestinians in the West Bank. Killing 11 Palestinians in the territory since last Friday. 11 Palestinians. A 12th Palestinian from the West Bank was killed during an Israeli police raid on workers in the coastal city of Ashkelon on Wednesday. Five Palestinians were killed in the West Bank late Wednesday and Thursday. Two Palestinians, Shas Kamanji, 29, and Mustafa Abu al Rub, 30, were shot and killed near the northern West Bank city of Janine on Thursday. That city has been subjected to severe Israeli movement restrictions as a form of collective punishment after a Palestinian from a nearby village shot and killed three people at Tel Aviv last week. And this is uh, um, one of uh, the really problematic, brutal, inhumane, totally violating Jewish ethics policies of the Israeli government. That uh, when there's an um, incident, by a Palestinian, a violent incident by a Palestinian. They then go after the Palestinian's family, demolish his home uh, and his neighborhood, um, and uh, begin a, a repressive um, shutdown of the whole city that he comes from. And this kind of uh, brutal response blaming what they call collective punishment where um not just the person who did the act is shot or imprisoned and punished but everybody in his family everybody who knows him now everybody in his family is not the same in arab cultures as it is in the west in the west a family's mother father children maybe grandparents maybe an aunt or an uncle or whatever. But families in Arab culture are huge, multi-generational. Uh, and, uh, you know, the typical family um, would have 20, 25 people minimum. That's why uh, Ramadan is so busy. They have to go visit all their family. It's one family after another family after another family, and it fills up 30 days of Ramadan. <laughs> just visiting family. So when you read, oh, that they demolish family homes, they punish family members, you're talking about a large group of people, some of whom may not have even liked the terrorists or even knew them very well. Some cousin, a distant, he may have been just like a distant cousin or something, but he is being punished as well. Uh, this is brutal and inhumane. And uh, is one of the uh, one of the things that they talk about uh, uh, as a violation of human rights that's been brought to the um, International Criminal Court and the UN. Uh, one of the you know has complained about it. All the uh, peace groups uh, and Palestinian groups uh, and pro-Palestinian groups have complained about this. Okay. Um, so uh, following the Tel Aviv attack, the Prime Minister Bennett 
granted full freedom of action to the army, the Shin Bet, Israel State Security Agency, and all security forces in order to defeat the terror. So that's giving them a license to kill, to terrorize, to torture, to demolish, to destroy. Full freedom of action. At least nine Palestinian civilians, including two children and two women, have been killed by Israeli forces since Bennett's announcement, according to the Palestinian Center for Human Rights. Kamaji was killed in his Kafir Dars village when Israel forces opened fire at a crowd of people throwing stones at military vehicles. Another person reported a 17-year-old was critically injured. Shas Kamaji is the brother of Ay Ayham Kamaji, one of six Palestinians who escaped from Gilbin prison inside Israel last September. In what was viewed as a devastating blow to the reputation of Israel's security apparatus. Ayam Kamaji remained at large for nearly two weeks before being arrested in Janine. After Israeli forces withdrew from the area early Thursday, Abu al-Rub was found with a live bullet wound to his chest and pronounced dead upon arrival to the hospital. No eyewitnesses were available to speak about the circumstances of his death, the Palestinian Center for Human Rights stated. Another Palestinian 20-year-old, Omar Mohammed Al-Alayan, was killed during an arrest raid in Silwad village near the central west bank of Ramallah late Wednesday. The Palestinian Center for Human Rights stated that Israel's snipers occupied the rooftops of three residential buildings in the village as military forces surrounded and fired towards a two-story home before raiding it. Palestinians confronted the raiding forces as they withdrew from Silwad, throwing stones and empty bottles towards their vehicles, causing one to collide with a wall near a roundabout. Uh, during the um, raid on Silwad, Israel forces fired bullets and tear gas towards the stone-throwing Palestinians, wounding several including Aliyan, who died after being shot in the chest. Also on Wednesday night, Israeli forces shot and killed 16-year-old uh, Kasai Mohammed Hamada as Palestinian youths confronted soldiers near the village of Hussan, west of Bethlehem, in the central West Bank. The teens sustained multiple gunshot wounds from a distance of around 20 meters, according to Defense for Children International Palestine which added that at least one bullet struck him in the head. So the, the, the param Palestinian paramedics are prevented from coming in to treat um, his body um, and they're not um, allowing it uh, to uh, return, return the body. Israel claimed that the soldier shot at Hamara after he threw a Molotov cocktail. The teen is the seventh Palestinian child shot and killed by Israel in 2022 the third killed after allegedly throwing a Molotov cocktail. Last week, Israeli forces shot and killed Nafez Mohammed Kanafsha near a military base, claiming the 15-year-old was throwing Molotov cocktails. They made a similar campaign to shoot and kill Shahad de Salah, 13, in a village near Bethlehem. Uh, and uh, they, likewise, they prevented Palestinians from providing free aid to Kanafsha and Salah as they bled to death on the ground. Hamara, uh, Hamara is the second Palestinian teen killed by uh, Israeli forces this week. Yes, hello. They uh, executed. May I? That's it. Thank you very you much. You have a good day. You too. After she allegedly acted as a specific Man. Now, this woman, uh, this was a woman who uh, was uh, coming near the, um, oh, my battery is low on my iPhone. Let me see if I can get it to work. Uh, this woman was coming close to um, a checkpoint. I was just walking, uh, not doing anything particular. Uh, and they decided that she was suspicious and they shot her. Uh, they didn't ask her any questions. They didn't ask her to identify herself, nothing. They just shot her. She has uh, four children. 
and uh, I think she was uh, uh, on her way shopping or something like that. Um, so she got killed. Uh, video of the incident shows soldiers fired on the unarmed widow and mother, or she had six children at point blank range. The woman was returned after home visiting relatives when she was killed, um, suggesting that uh, she intended to die uh, in an act of suicide by soldiers. That's what the, uh, um, uh, the family was told, but the family rejected that. Now an eighth fatality uh, on Baita, they shot Fawaz Hamayad, 45, in the chest in, in the Baita village near Nablus. The father of three succumbed to his injuries the following day. So um, Hamayad is the eighth Palestinian killed in Baita since Jewish settlers established Aviatar, an outpost on land belonging to the village in May last year. Most were killed as Israel violently repressed weekly protests against the settlement outpost where the Israeli military maintains a, a presence. So institutionalized impunity, um, nothing's going to happen to any of these um, people who have uh, shot them. Nothing's going to happen to the soldier. I'm not going to read the rest of the article because it's, we're almost out of time. Um, and uh, um, just want to mention, uh, and, and, and with Bennett giving uh, freedom to the military um, and all the groups to do what they want, to uh, Palestinians. Isa, good morning. Isa Sabalo here from Burkina Faso. Um, that uh, we uh, know that this is just going to get worse. So other articles uh, that you might want to check out is um, what's interesting is the union your students admit it faked the petition signatures. Um, I'm not sure where that happened. I think that was might have been in Montreal. Um, uh, there was a petition, um, and uh, oh no, this is a UK pro Israel group campaigning against UK's National Union of Students, and uh, they admitted that they faked um, a lot of uh, signatures. Uh, the uh, EU uh, deportation agency, Mull's partnership, um, let's quickly look at that. Um, that the uh, War in Ukraine has been a godsend to quite a few scoundrels. Bodies uh, with reputation for cruelty transformed themselves into city almost overnight. Frontex, the European Union's border guard agency, is among those to have undergone a makeover, arranging flights for people fleeing uh, Ukraine. It now masquerades as a humanitarian organization, but it's uh, better known for expelling refugees and giving the right to safety. Um, and uh, so what, what's happened is that they're uh, taking advantage, uh, even um, many of these groups, even uh, using Ukrainians as part of their human trafficking scheme. So, hey, hi, good morning, Edward. So as we've seen before, um, that these uh, violent uh, episodes in human history give a lot of bad people an opportunity to do well. For example, munitions manufacturers are doing very well and human traffickers are doing very well um, because there's uh, Ukrainians fleeing. Uh, when I was in Jordan, we had um, a lot of Nigerian refugees traffic, uh, and actually uh, using my house, uh, an apartment in my building uh, to traffic the women. So I have personal experience seeing how uh, people profit off of misery and war. Uh, and this, we have to bring peace. Many organizations, military manufacturers are doing quite well. They love war. Lots of people love war uh, and do very well by war. Um, one of the other, um, uh, we talked about the um, uh, two people who were killed this week. Um, one was a, lay, a lawyer and uh, another a laborer um, who, uh, this was on uh, 13th of April on Thursday, where they killed two Palestinians and occupied West Bank and Israel under 48 hours. A Palestinian lawyer was killed during a raid in the West Bank city of Nablus while dropping his three nephews off to school. Um, 
and he was shot in the chest and then uh, at 32 years old, and then a worker was killed, a Palestinian worker in the Israel city of Ashkelon um, was fatally shot. Um, he looked suspicious uh, and during the inspection, they, uh, he say he pulled out a knife and attempted to stab the officer um, and uh, he got was shot and killed. Uh, so uh, again, we see that uh, Bennett giving freedom of action, he was led um, into um, the IDF and to other uh, security agencies and settlers groups to do as they wish is again an example of why um, that they're taking an uh, opportunity and blaming it on violence inherent in Ramadan. And um, it's a joke. People are exhausted in Ramadan. People are fasting all day. Uh, they sleep most of the day. Uh, there's lot, not a lot of energy to provoke violence if you're practicing Ramadan and practicing Muslim. So it's a joke that Ramadan incites violence. It's not true that there's anything in Passover that makes Jews more violent. And there's nothing in Christianity where Jesus died as an example of nonviolence, that the way people are supposed to, to deal with violence is through nonviolence and offering your life as a sacrifice that is nothing there to provoke violence. So uh, again, this mantra that we're hearing over and over again, that the religious holidays provoke violence is not true. What happens is that what's been happening is Israel has been provoked, has been provoking Palestinians for weeks, for weeks, for months in demolitions and shootings and arrests. We just read uh, the article with the list of all the people who have been killed just the last few weeks. So what they are doing is they are um, creating an environment of hatred where Palestinians will, will want revenge. They're uh, provoking Christians um, in uh, violent acts. The settlers have been harassing the Christians and uh, in this whole business of a uh, settler organization stealing the uh, Petra Hotel from the Greek Orthodox Church. These are things to provoke people. So when we talk about violence, we have to talk about provocation. What causes people to be violent? Uh, and certainly when the, the, the main thing we've been talking about, which has been the um, invasion of the uh, mosque, certainly that was definitely a response to violence. So um, I'm going to end. Uh, again, I want to show that Al Jazeera um, video of... Um, the mosque invasion. And um, just remember, oh, uh, oh, here's, oh, here's the one on Janine raids. Let's look at that to close. That this shows how this violence, this provocative violence where Israel um, allowed the settlers outside the Alaska mosque to, to um, provoke the people in the mosque by threatening to invade the mosque to uh, uh, sacrifice animals as in the Bible, um, as in ancient times, was a provocation to the Palestinians who then started throwing things uh, uh, to protect them. So uh, it's very important to uh, get the full story on things. And, and here's the- We're here in the wasp's nest, or this is the name the Israeli media calls the Janine refugee camp. It's a place that has more than 11,000 Palestinian refugees who live in an area that doesn't exceed one square kilometer. 65% of the camp's residents are under 24. 
We're talking about a population, the majority of which has lived under the Israeli occupation, has never lived in a place of freedom, statehood. <laughs> they say that they are fighting the Israeli occupation with guns. All estimates show that there are hundreds of gunmen in the camp, and usually we see them take up their weapons and fight the Israeli occupation whenever there is a raid by the Israeli army. This is the grave of Ahmed al-Sa'di, and this is a picture of him next to his friend, Abdullah al-Husari. When we came here to Ahmed's funeral, his friends told us that he lost his will to live after his friend Abdullah was killed in confrontations with the Israeli forces early in March. They're now buried just meters away from each other. His friend was telling us that Ahmed lost his appetite for life. He felt like he was helpless, hopeless. After the Israeli forces killed his friend, he also died while he was clashing with the Israeli forces. This generation has grew up listening to stories about 2002, what is known here as the Jinin Battle, whereby more than 23 Israeli soldiers were killed, 50 Palestinians, almost half of them were fighters. So many here tell us that this is the legacy of the Jinin refugee camp, and they want to keep that legacy alive. So we will end, um, hopefully, uh, we will um, get through this week without any further horrible violence. But I, I just think it was very important to uh, compare and contrast the uh, various stories reporting on the Alaska Mosque. And uh, um, we need to, um, when we get our news, uh, we need to mine these stories because we know that uh, each news agency has its own slant. Um, and that's really tragic when we're talking about human lives, that uh, we're all entitled to uh, life, to our human rights, to home, to food, to medical care, to education. Um, and uh, we need to just keep resisting tyranny, resisting violence, and resist resisting power when it's used against the people. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Sarah, um, how are you today? Um, okay. I'm at work. Oh, you are? Oh, good, good, good. Well, I'm glad that we can um, take a little uh, time off and multitask uh, with us. Uh, happy Passover. Um, I yeah. had some all the holidays to everybody. A happy holidays to everybody. I had some filter fish and horseradish, and I'm having my matzah as we speak. <laughs> uh, matzah and butter, my very one of my very favorite foods. Um, and um, it's just so sad because we know that the three Abrahamic religions have brought so much peace and humanity to our world. Um, and they were all founded uh, to do that. Um, to make the world a better place, to make people um, uh, not abuse, to prevent people from abusing each other and having people care for each other. Um, and it's in all the scriptures of all of our religions and, 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 and Islam and Christianity basically derive from the Bible. And when you look at the Bible, um, it's very clear that people are to be treated with compassion, even and strangers especially. Um, and I remember during Pesach, uh, we have to remember that uh, one of the one of the, the commands in the, the uh, for the Hebrews, for the Jews, was to take care of strangers, because remember you were strangers in Egypt. So that's the whole point of Passover: is remembering how Jews were abused and uh, strangers in Egypt, and God rescued them from them, told them, don't behave that way yourselves. 
don't behave that way yourselves. Do not be violent. Be compassionate. Be helpful to all, including non-Jews, including strangers. And Israel's policies so violate Jewish ethics. Um, um, and I've read a lot about this, particularly uh, ethics with strangers and how to deal with strangers. Um, and I just pray that the, um, the, the, the better angels in Israel are able to um, transcend what's going on. But all my Israeli friends are, are pretty depressed, as my friends in uh, Palestine and in Jordan. So um, let's hope that this Ukraine crisis comes to an end so that people will pay attention to what's going on in Palestine. Because right now, uh, the um, radical rightist Israelis, particularly the settlers, are taking advantage of the situation and uh, provoking Palestinians. And uh, hopefully we can get through Ramadan um, without a war breaking out. So uh, peace to everybody. Uh, blessings, uh, peace, salam, shalom to everyone. And I embedded my pneumonia is better today's my last day on antibiotics. So I'm hoping that I'll be back full force soon. Love you all. Thank you for joining. Thanks, Ed. Take care. Thank you, everybody on Facebook. Bye.